Okay, uh, good morning and uh, welcome to everyone. Thank you for connecting uh, to this class where we go through um, the, the books, Hebrews, First and Second Peter, Jude and James. Um, we'll pray and begin. We had started off with Hebrews chapter 3 in the last class. So then we will try and uh, pick up from where we stop. Um, I want to request one of us to please lead with a word of prayer. So anyone? Shall I pray? Yes, yes, Sivya. Thank you, Father. Thank you uh, for this uh, beautiful time. Uh, uh, thank you for giving us an opportunity to come uh, once again into your presence, Father. Uh, yes, Lord, uh, thank you that uh, you're teaching us through your word, especially uh, the deep um, uh, truths that are hidden in your word, Appa. Uh, you help us see uh, just like the uh, the parable of the person who uh, bought the whole field uh, in order to gain the treasure of the pearl, Appa. We pray, Father, let us... Uh, um, uh, uh, help us, Father, to see the pearls, Father, Lord, to to um, glean those, Father, from your word. Uh, thank you, Father, for Pastor Nancy, Lord. Uh, you bless her. You equip her, anoint her, Father, Lord. Uh, we pray that uh, you fill her with your Holy Spirit, Lord. And as she, um, uh, Lord, teaches us your word, Appa, you uh, give the wisdom, the grace, the right words, uh, Lord, to speak. Uh, Father, we pray for each and every student here, Lord, uh, everyone who is going to hear these uh, these uh, sessions. I pray, Father, for uh, your grace, your wisdom upon each one of us that we may be uh, people, Father, who, who hear your word and you uh, we obey it, we listen to it and obey it, Appa, uh, that we may be people who are doers of the word, uh, Lord, who uh, uh, who can perceive uh, what you're telling us, Father, and we can practice it, Father, in our lives. Um, thank you and praise you for this wonderful time. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Divya. Um, so we had started with Hebrews chapter 3 and there we saw a few more titles or descriptions to help us understand who the Lord Jesus is. Uh, we had already seen that he's a high priest, but uh, the apostle is, is another new thing that we saw about the Lord Jesus. Apostle is the sent one and in Hebrews 1, we saw that the Lord Jesus is the greatest message um, that has come to us. Though God has spoken at various times in various ways, the best message of God is the Lord Jesus. So the sent one is that message. The sent one brought that message. And that's how we understand the word apostle because it means ambassador or sent one. And uh, we saw that the writer is trying to help the the hebrew believers um have the right perspective and mindset regarding the lord jesus so uh, he spoke about the deity of christ and he spoke about um, the humanity of christ because there were contentions and contradictions uh, about these matters but now there's another aspect that he addresses and that is uh, the fact that even a leader like Moses, whom they respected, is but a servant in the house of God. And the Lord Jesus being the uh, son of God and God himself is the master. So he says, yes, um, uh, Moses did a wonderful job. He was faithful in what God called him to do. But we see somebody who is much greater. Okay, um, uh, As we look at the example of Moses, you know, here there is another uh, mention, uh, another aspect mentioned in verse 3 of Hebrews chapter 3. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses. So he, uh, he says, uh, Moses is faithful, but Jesus Christ is even more faithful uh, as far as the house of God is concerned. And the glory of Moses 
what is the glory of moses we know that when moses had a had an encounter with god he came back reflecting that glory if we recall there was a time when his face was shining after spending time in the presence of god this is in exodus chapter 34 uh, and not just about him manifesting the glory of god in this way but god's work and god's um, uh, support or favor over moses's life is also incredible because there were times where god was in great favor okay regarding moses even um uh, his own uh, people like miriam and aaron god justified moses um you know when when there were uh, uh, complaints about him or when they were uh, they the people spoke ill about him so we see in all these things that god considered moses very very faithful okay um and even the sons of korah so there's uh, another similar incident but in all these matters god was on his side and uh, god showed his glory now if this is not mighty enough uh, the writer is saying that somebody has more glory than moses okay so establishing time and again uh, the things that they held high he is trying to reveal to them is Christ, that christ is higher uh, than all their standards you know all their uh, benchmarks so the glory of jesus when we talk about it we know that he came to reveal the glory of the father um, in um, all that he said all that he did his ministry but then there were times when we saw the power of god at work in his life uh, moments such as transfiguration resurrection okay all of these revealed a much greater glory as compared to the kind that moses um, was was reflecting from god so this was to establish lord jesus as a greater uh, person so um, you know he made that comparison in this in these verses where he said that uh, the house is the builder of the house okay is greater than the house itself and obviously even those who are um, serving which uh, in which is referring to moses so verse 6 but christ as a son over his own house whose house we are if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end so uh, he is pointing to the fact that the lord jesus is the owner or he is the prince or he is the builder of the house of god and what is the house of God? You know, we've talked about this in other uh, courses. We've said that the house of God is not a building. It's not a structure. It is the people who are part of his body, the people who are part of his kingdom. So we are the house of God. So he points that out here. He says, whose house we are, meaning all the believers, we are the house of God. Uh, and again, you see, these are the discouraged believers. So there is that word of exhortation where he says, please don't let go. Hold on. Because all of this greatness is part of who the Lord Jesus is. So how would you give up under um, you know difficult circumstances? Hold on to that confidence. And the way he puts it is, we are his house if we hold fast the confidence, meaning it's almost like challenging them if you don't give up you are part of the um, household of of god so um, you know it, it's it's not that you know they would lose their salvation if they give up or anything like that but it's a it's a way of speaking it's a uh, you know a manner of speech where uh, he is challenging them and and saying that if you hold fast to your confidence then you know you are the house of god and rejoicing of the hope firm to the end so the way jesus uh, preached to the people there are many times when he said he who um you know uh, he who endures till the end uh 
so those who make it to the finish line he will be saved so in another way to understand this he is saying there is need of perseverance so in the journey of our faith um many of us we start out with great zeal and that is everyone's story so as we uh, you know talk to each other and find out hey how were you when you were born again people would share uh, all these fiery fervent uh, you know earnest experiences where where we feel wow what what fire one carried when they came to know the lord jesus but you see the encouragement in god's word is yes that happens when when we start the journey but as we go through the journey there are many um, seasons where we have to keep that fire or that is a difficult part uh, and the message that is coming to us is don't lose that fire someone who can keep that fire keep that confidence keep the faith uh, till the end is the is 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 somebody who is really uh, you know trusting in god really believing in god and that's what we all want so hold fast the confidence or uh, in other words you know if you look at the greek word there that would mean you hold down or retain um, you seize you possess don't let go of the faith that you have and hold fast to it continue on with the lord jesus and this is true commitment what's the point if we are willing to throw in the towel every time uh, things get rough but that's not you know the right way to live our christian life the right way is to live with a sense of commitment a long term commitment and endurance and perseverance uh, and and there are many reasons you know that we can fix our eyes on and all of these things the truth that we learned about jesus it will encourage us and establish us in the things of god okay um let's move ahead okay so uh there just just before we go to verse 7 uh verse 6 says uh, hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end so uh, a little bit of um emphasis on rejoicing of the hope firm to the end we have incredible hope because of the gospel because of salvation um when we did not know jesus when we were not part of his kingdom we did not have hope but now we have hope so think about this he's saying uh, it's not a joyless life it may be a difficult life but part of the journey uh, is the joy that comes from god so he says hold on and uh, hold on to the rejoicing of the hope we have hope and we need to be joyful about it if we just look at the um, you know another version so the amplified version that last part uh, it, it says sense of triumph in our hope so hold on to that as well sense of triumph in our hope uh, and the esv version puts it in a uh, you know another simpler way it says boasting in our hope so rejoicing triumph uh, in our hope boasting in our hope so you see there that uh, it, it's it's a mindset that a believer needs to have where we are we are looking at jesus looking at the value of who he is and that gives us strength we persevere we also have joy rejoicing boasting you know in the hope that god has given us so uh, let's move ahead to uh, verse 7 we can read from verses 7 through 11 um and uh, if one of us can volunteer that will be great 7 to 11 Can I read things to you? Oh yes, please, Ashley. Yes. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts, as in the rebellion, on the day of testing in the wilderness, 
where your fathers put me to the test and so my words for 40 years. Therefore I was provoked with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart. They have not known my ways. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Thank you. Uh, so in this passage, we uh, have an example about the children of Israel, uh, you know, the wrong example, and how they were people who had a hard heart, okay? And that is something that God does not want uh, for any any uh, child of his, uh, any believers, and uh, especially in this season that the uh, listeners are in, you know, sometimes disappointment, discouragement uh, can make us very cold. You remember earlier he said um, that um, if if you don't hold on, you know, the fa you, falling away, we discussed about that, going astray, if a boat is not anchored, then what happens? There is that chance of slowly going away from the uh, from the place where we should be. So, uh, disappointment and discouragement uh, may have that impact on people. So, all the more he is trying to help them know that don't let it get you. We may be going through it, but that should not, um, you know, make our hearts hard. So if we are not careful, that is something that can happen. Our hearts can become hard. So he says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, and he goes on to, you know, state a couple of things. Why is he saying like this? You remember? Even earlier, he said, uh, if the message that has come, uh, you know, through Moses, if people have not followed that and it had consequences, how much more, you know, now if we neglect the message that has come from the Lord Jesus. So there are greater consequences for not heeding to what God is saying. So God has sent a message through his son and uh, you know, we must take it seriously. That's the whole point that he is making. So he's saying through all that has been shared so far, and especially with the emphasis on the Lord Jesus, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, he moves on, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So, it's a very beautiful, um, you know, way of reminding and inviting the listeners. He says, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Now, how many of us know that uh, God is speaking? He is a speaking God. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirits, as uh, Romans 8.16, uh, you know, tells us. So God is constantly speaking. And God is speaking today. It's always the case. You know, uh, there is something that God wants to convey to us. And he doesn't delay in bringing us the word that we need on time. And so he's saying, it's not like I'm sharing all this with you and then eventually God will speak to you. Slowly God will bring to you. He says, I mean, he doesn't put it that way. There is an urgency to this message. He says, through everything that I have spoken to you, the Holy Spirit is trying to tell you something. And he wants you to take heed right now. So the urgency of the message, he says, today, if you will hear his voice, or in other words, you know, uh, whatever God is speaking to you, and when you're sensitive to the voice of God and you pick it up, he says, Please respond. So do not harden your hearts. Simply means to hear and to respond. So when we hear and we don't respond, that's when 
the hardness comes you know we've seen examples of people like uh, king saul where uh, uh, you know so many things went wrong uh, in his life because it had become a pattern over a period of time where god is saying but you know there's no response there's no obedience and that causes hardness of hearts uh, and that's something that he's warning the people about so discouragement disappointment experience like experiences like this they can uh, you know tempt us to go to that place where we say oh uh, why should I bother? Everything is so hard. Why should I listen? Why should I obey God? You know, we can go to that place. But the risk that we run is our hearts will eventually slowly become very hard. Hard is insensitive. Where we're not able to pick up God's message in the now. And he's saying, look, our God is a God who can speak into our situations and circumstances, and which is why he uses the term today with a sense of urgency. Uh, it, it's a firm invitation of the Holy Spirit uh, that is given to us, and we must respond to it. So the people uh, of Israel who had this hard heart, what are some other things that are spoken about them? As in the rebellion. So what is rebellion? Rebellion is opposite of obedience. So they were doing their own thing. Uh, they were not so much, yes, they were walking, uh, following Moses, but they were, their hearts were far away from God. And that is, is uh, something we can pick up here. So rebellion is a life which is not yielded, not aligned, not obedient to God. So their hearts were hardened, as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness. So this is uh, a time when, uh, this is in Numbers 20, verses 1 through 13, that he's, he's probably referring to, um, you know, Israel's rebellion and trial at uh, Meribah. So, you know, they... They were rebelling against Moses and they wanted water and, and all of that. So uh, their behavior in the wilderness displeased God because they did not express their trust in God. So in the day of trial in the wilderness, he goes on, verse 9, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works 40 years. So what happened? No, he's just saying that trust, right? It's associated with, or uh, we could say, trust and believing in God. Uh, it's associated with a soft heart, which responds to God. Now, if you look at these people, they had seen so many acts of God. They had seen works of God. Okay, uh, And for them, it should have actually been very easy to trust God in the wilderness because he had already taken them out of, uh, you know, the, uh, the Red Sea parted and they came out, they had seen the plagues in Egypt. Now, tell me if the miracles that God has done in the past in our lives, if it produces no faith for today, then, you know, how, uh, how, are, we, how are we understanding the greatness of God? But that's exactly what happened to these people. They had seen in fact, God is saying, and saw my works 40 years. So these people, the condition of their hearts was, they have experienced and experienced and experienced God's greatness, His goodness. However, all that didn't help in today's experience. They have a hard heart. And uh, that is something he is not happy about. And so he's saying, look, don't be like those people who have experienced God and yet they are struggling to believe or they don't believe. They are, um, you know, they, uh, the people who uh, were part of the rebellion. So verse 10, what is God's response to this kind of a hard heart? Verse 10, therefore, I was angry with that generation. So do you remember? Uh, they did not have the opportunity to go into the promised land. Only two people, 
among them we know joshua caleb who finally uh, you know had the opportunity to lead the next generation into the promised land but a hard heart kept them out of the promises of god uh, we must be warned of an insensitive unbelieving hard heart when god speaks to us let's remember the way the writer is saying here he uses the word today today if you hear his voice today if you understand what god is trying to tell us please respond respond to it immediately um so god was angry with that generation and said they always go astray in their heart so these things start with the heart where we we begin to give up and we begin to let go of of god and our confidence in god in our heart uh, and they have not known my ways remember we we've, we've talked about this in psalm 103 where we are told that um, the children of israel they were not intimate with god they just had you know they knew god for the works that he did but it is told about moses that moses knew god's ways so he was walking deeper with god and when one is walking deeper with god we also see that god was able to reveal many secret things to him or many um you know many uh, things which are precious to him he revealed it to moses and moses knew how god's nature was and how god functioned so in in other words moses could understand the why or the heart of god whereas these children of israel 40 years of miracles they never understood god how how can that be that they are observing everything god is doing they don't know who this god is and that's really sad and uh, that's the warning to these discouraged believers please don't get into that mode uh, and uh, miss out you know on what god is doing so verse 11 so i swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest so uh, was there a consequence to hardness of heart rebellion unbelief yes what what are the consequences god was angry and when he was angry he made this decision they will not enter my rest what is my rest we will talk more about it later on you know it's the god kind of rest when god finished uh, his work in creation we know that is that reference to um uh, on the on after finishing all the work on the last day he rested okay he rested so the god kind of rest when everything is done and you uh, you know you over here you you would see they shall not enter my rest it's a way of saying that the fulfillment of promises as far as the people were concerned god was so angry that they did not have the opportunity to see the promises fulfilled 40 years they walked around how sad how sad you know experiencing the miracles of god but a hard heart kept them out of experiencing the promises of god you know sometimes there are all these sermons preached about you know the land of canaan the land flowing with milk and honey um uh, so possessing the land and all that but here are a whole bunch of people thousands of them they could not experience the land of canaan not that god did not want in fact god only wanted it for them no wonder he sent a deliverer moses and he made a way but there was something internal that kept them out of the land of canaan and all the blessings of the land of canaan what was that unbelief hardness of heart so there is a warning to all of us so we can uh, move ahead we will read from verses 12 through 19 uh i hope you you are all doing fine Uh, is there anything that you wanted to talk about before we proceed 
I hope Hebrews is okay because it's unlike uh, Acts that we did last semester, which is more like, you know, a story. So then it's easier to grasp. But here uh, there are concepts. Ma'am, we are enjoying. Oh, okay. Thank you, sister. Thank you, sister. It's so insightful then. Okay. Ma shall I read from 12? Yes, please. Yes, please. You can read, sister. Go ahead. 12 through? Uh, you can read from 12 through 19. 19. Hebrews 4, 20 to 19. For the word of God is living and active. Uh, sister, sorry to interrupt you. 3. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 3, you could please read. Okay. 3, 12, 12 through 19. Okay. Yeah. Hebrews 3, 12 to 9. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it, as it is called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end. As it is said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, for who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest but to those who were disobedient. So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Um, so once again, it's a repetition of the same thought um, and uh, a warning. So when there's repetition, it's uh, supposed to reiterate uh, the same concept and let us know that what is being said is very very important so um he sums it up beautifully towards the end he says uh, they did not enter in because of unbelief in verse 19 he gave us that conclusion unbelief unbelief you no know, that is what will keep us out so what was the problem with these people disobedience we looked at that uh, but unbelief is is uh, you know a major issue that has been pointed out here so from verse 12 um, he says beware brethren uh, notice the terms that are used brethren is a term that you will find in uh, many of of the new testament books uh, to refer to believers so whenever you see brethren we can understand they are part of the body of Christ. That's why brethren. So beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart, again, of unbelief in departing from the living God. So he is doing his best to um, plead with the believer, brethren. Then he says, evil heart of unbelief when we look at that uh, in first of all he's saying a heart of unbelief is what it is evil so when we look at other translations uh, amplified amplified uses the term wicked unbelieving heart so an unbelieving heart think about this we are what are we what are we termed as we call each other believers so what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to believe. Now, believers, when we become unbelieving, our hearts are unbelieving, uh, the author is, it's, it's a rebuke. He says, evil heart of unbelief. And uh, as I said, other words, wicked heart of unbelief. You know, what does it do? It causes us to depart or go away from God. It brings, ultimately, if we go away from God, what will happen? It will bring defilement uh, into our lives. So these are the things that a believer should be warned about. Unbelief is dangerous. It'll, it can make us go away from God 
uh, it can bring defilement into our lives. So, what should we do? Okay, warning is there, but also tell us what should we do. One is the opposite of unbelief is believe. Okay, we must believe. So, individually, personally, we can help ourselves and and say, hey, you know, the way David encouraged himself in the Lord. So, it's actually speaking. If you look at uh, uh, what is there in the Bible, even Jesus, when he went through the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, he hoped that his disciples will pray with him, but he did his part. He prayed, he sought the Lord. So whatever we can do individually, personally, we must do to keep ourselves out of this heart of unbelief. But in addition to that, verse 13, you know, it says, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. So he's giving us a solution. In the community of believers, he says, exhort one another. So uh, apart from personally encouraging myself, what I can do is I can receive the encouragement that others give me and I can also encourage uh, others. And the way he puts it, he says, exhort one another daily. Daily is, uh, you, could, you could think of it as regularly. You know, we may not meet each other every day and, you know, send out SMSs, WhatsApp messages to each other every day. But regularly to have this uh, uh, practice of mutual encouragement in the church is key for us. Okay, so uh, that is something we must develop within our believing communities where, yes, this journey of life is not easy. It's not easy for anyone. Uh, you know, if one is going through uh, discouragement, maybe somebody is going through failure, somebody is going through a loss, somebody is going through a season of questions and doubts. So all of us have a rough ride, you know, in some patches. Uh, and therefore, mutually doing it with encouragement is very, very important. And so the body of believers must be one where there is encouragement. Okay. Uh, that is something we must, I mean, if we have it in our local fellowships in our body, that's great. If it's not there, that's something to, to uh, work on, something to uh, pray about. So he says, and exhort one another daily while it is called today. So again, it's just, uh, 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 you know, a, a way of saying um, opportunity is still there and uh, there is an urgency for this. So encourage one another. And he says, lest any of your, you be hardened. So we already saw that our heart should not be hardened because it's dangerous. We can go away from God. Now he gives another reason for why our hearts can be hardened. What is that reason? deceitfulness of sin okay so sin uh, who who tempts us to sin satan and we know one of the names we use for satan is deceiver sin what it makes us do is it uh, you know satan will tell us that this will help you or this will give you pleasure or this will fulfill you and then we get into it from the beginning it's deceitful because we are being told that we are going to get something which is not the reality. We get into it and you know then it's always uh, a, a destructive result that we gain. So even in the end, it is deceitful. So he says the deceitfulness of sin. Uh, so even get, being in the path of sin is something that can harden our hearts. Okay. Uh, see, think about Samson. God had a great destiny for him and uh, God was gracious, was long-suffering. That is something we can see through uh, God's dealings with, with Samson. Opportunities were given, but he was going the same sinful path, sinful path. 
so what happens over a period of time i think even in the book of romans about the conscience we read you know your hardened conscience seared conscience so what happens is a heart can slowly become insensitive and we can come up with arguments reasonings you know as the book of corinthians says we can say no but this is okay once i can do it so what's happening slowly the hardening is happening okay and uh, we don't even recognize it but it's so dangerous it's leading us away from god so verse 14 for we have become partakers of christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end so same thing he says uh, let's finish this race let's not give up and verse 15 again he's repeating while it is said today if you will hear his voice do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion uh, verse 16 for who having heard rebelled indeed was it not all who came out of egypt led by moses verse 17 now with whom was he angry 40 years was it not those who sinned whose corpses fell in the wilderness so you see that the description of these people uh, their uh, disobedience and uh, the results so they even died in the wilderness in verse 18 and 19 uh, and to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest but to those who did not obey uh, so the fulfillment of god's promises they were not able to see see why why do you think you know they uh, god is calling it rest to talk about the land of canaan or the fulfillment of uh, his promises so charles will come to you uh, i'll just uh, leave this question open for all of us again he's saying my rest his rest they were kept away from rest which means the promised land why rest and promised land are uh, talked about as one thing anything asha oh okay oh okay fine uh, so siddhant has typed here in the chat he says finished work of jesus okay mm, finished work of jesus all right um okay that that's right in the greater context the finished work of jesus is the rest we understand that um in this context i was asking entering the promised land why is he saying the rest okay divya uh, you you have something to share uh, i uh, feel it is like a restoration to the original you know to the original plan and purpose of god uh, which they were kept away maybe you know due to lots of reasons um, and they are restored to that uh, that that original plan or their position mm. yeah so that that's true and uh, you know i can understand that because of course it's when you align yourself to that original plan that there's a sense of satisfaction uh, so yeah the restoration of god uh, asha asha is raising a hand here and i can see it so yeah you can share hey, you have to unmute and Um, after all that slavery that um, the Israelites went, so it's like in that process of I think the rest position, like Moses, God sent Moses to rescue them for the purpose to go to the promised land. So I'm thinking because of the slavery they went and all the thing they um, uh, hard to say I'm not sure, but so once. It's like in normal life also when we go through all that the pain and hurt and uh, physical work and all we need a rest at the moment. So after like Jesus from for God, after all the six day he worked he took rest. So now from the slavery he wants I think the process of rest. Yeah, thank you, Asha. That's uh, you know that's um, very profound and deep. That's true. they had been through that journey and uh, they they finally 
why did they even go through the journey to go to the promised land right so uh, they needed that rest unfortunately you know their uh, disobedience kept them out their heart of unbelief kept them out uh, yes uh, charles okay can you hear me yes we can okay thank you um uh first i want a bit shed more light on on verse 16 part a for who having had rebelled uh had they already had had they already had uh who told them and um, that rebellion, because when you read down, they are talking of um, they they tested him. So I wanted you to get more light on that part. For who have uh, yes, Charles. So I heard your question there. Uh, so in verse 16, it says, for who having heard rebel. So the way we will understand this is it's simply saying as a nation, okay, Israel, it had a very good beginning of faith, isn't it? Because they experienced the greatness of God firsthand. They uh, saw how God protected them and uh, there were judgments on Egypt. Uh, even if you uh, think about the Passover, how beautiful that uh, the firstborn, firstborns of the people of Egypt were dying, whereas those of um, you know this community they were protected. Now all this is supernatural, and they have seen how God can protect, how God can provide, and when when we experience God. One of the things that a simple heart or a sensitive heart um, can, can do is it can understand who God is and say, wow, God, you're so good. Um, your love for me is so great. You know, that is the kind of inference we get out of God's actions. But having seen all this, you know, having uh, seen God's protection, uh, through the wilderness, God's provision through the wilderness, you know, Mount Sinai experience, so many things that they went through, uh, they still rebelled. So what kind of a heart do they have? That's what he's saying. He's saying for who, having heard or having experienced, they still rebel. Okay, so I, I hope that uh, answers your question, Charles. Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Pastor. Okay, sure, sure. Yes, Charles. Uh, yes, Ms. Rupa, you have something to share. Just a small thought, ma'am. You said, uh, what is this rest and uh, what is the promised land? I think deep within, when we have the promise of God, when a person completely trusts in the goodness and the uh, uh, strength of God to take you to that place, that is where first you receive the rest. That is uh, in the heart. Those hearts, when they, that is, uh, God has already prepared the, uh, the promised land for them, which is beyond their imagination. But it is first started in our heart. There they failed. So the rest begins in the heart and we receive it in uh, provision in, in the canon, the promised land, I think. That's what I just yeah. want to share. Thank you. Thank you, Sarupa. Very beautiful thought. And that's very true. You know, it's the place of origin is our heart. So once we go astray there, then experiencing it in our uh, real life, uh, that may not happen. And so we need to maintain that simple heart of faith um, towards God. And there are lots of responses here in our uh, chat where the finished work of Jesus, entering the presence of God uh, under his grace, uh, all of these are, uh, you know, 
this is our understanding of the rest of god which has been provided for us uh, today because of what christ has done uh, and uh, avni adds a place of peace and joy where we enjoy fellowship with him and his promises okay so can we shares the rest was an accomplishment due to diligence okay we'll talk about it kennedy we'll talk about more about it when we uh, move ahead from uh, here so uh, let's go ahead let's take a break uh, we will come back at uh, 1002 and uh, uh, you know start have the next session so see you all soon thank you <laughs>